Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Live in the Classroom. Today, we're live at the Learner Support Center here in CCISD, and we're at the Science and Engineering District Fair. We're so excited. We have Andrea Fries here. She's a Secondary Science Coordinator, um, and we love this event every single year. It's a great opportunity to see the talent, the uh, intelligence of all of our students across the district. Tell me exactly what's going on here today. So I agree, it is so amazing to see, we have close to 300 projects. This is our 64, 64th year of doing district science fair. Um, and these projects come from uh, over 10 campuses. So this is sixth through 12th grade. We have a senior division and a junior division. And these kids, they just check their projects in last night, they got set up and they'll actually be here today. Right now we have a bunch of judges. So. I would say over 50 judges from our STEM community that are here contributing their time to going through these projects. And then beginning later this afternoon, the kids are gonna come and they're gonna interview all the students about their project. Yeah, so this is just the first level of judging, right? Exactly. That's happening right now. Uh, so tell me what goes into the students creating their projects for the science fair. This isn't just a January thing. This is a kind of a whole semester long thing, right? Yes, thank you for asking. So they have actually, we started science fair back in August. Mm -hmm. So it starts right away when they get back to school and it starts on their campus. There is a campus science fair coordinator mm -hmm and they basically will meet with these groups of students after school, during school if they have time, mm -hmm. and they'll guide these students through their project from start to finish. And they actually will have a campus science fair. Mm -hmm. And the top level participants will then move on, so they'll be judged at the campus level, and then they'll move on and they'll compete at the district level. So they have put a lot of time, a lot of energy. The judges at the campus level give them feedback so they can make changes and then they'll do it again here at the district level. So after the district level, um, so judging is taking place today, this week, what happens next? So next is our regional level and that is the Science and Engineering Fair of Houston. This year is gonna take place in the Fort Bend Epicenter. So it's kind of a big thing. So places first through fifth place um, will go on to compete at the regional level. And then at the regional level, uh, the top uh, places will then have a chance to go to the state level, which is at Texas A&M. From the state level, actually last year we had a student compete internationally. An international level is hosted in California this year. So there, this, the competition track continues all the way through April. Yeah, so again, this is a year-long thing. It's not just one season for these students, but it gives us a great opportunity to see the kinds of things that are happening here within the district and that it's the, these sponsors and the teachers are fully committed to, to the students year-long. Um, what has Is there any projects that surprise you every year, like the topics or themes or anything like that? Well, I love... Honestly, their titles are so creative, and just their um, their research, their methodology is very unique. And you can tell they've had they'll they're thinking outside of the box. Mm -hmm. They're going above and beyond just looking up and and thinking about the natural world. They're thinking about how they can solve problems mm -hmm. and really contribute to science. Yeah, and uh, we've got some uh, volunteer judges. You mentioned we have about 50. Um, we actually have some that are standing by. We're gonna get a quick pan of some of the projects, just a quick glimpse of some of the projects that are happening here. Um, and some of our judges are hard at work. We've got two judges right now that we're gonna quickly interview. We've got Charles and Debbie. Um, guys, thank you, first of all, thank you so much for volunteering this year. I know that there's always a need for volunteers for the District Science Fair. Why did you decide that you wanted to do this today? I've been judging Science Fair for the last 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. I was a former high school science teacher locally and went into the chemical industry. And it's part of my passion to see the youth and their education and what they're in, interested in and you know just how they're developing. It's it's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Like, probably the same reason. So I have judged science fair almost 30 years. Um, and I, it's a way to give back very encouragingly. So, and ensure that you can give those positive feedback to our up and coming research science and make sure to give it the energy it deserves. Is there anything that surprises you when you come and you're reading about the projects or learning? Anything that you're kind of shocked about? I remember growing up in the local science field with NASA, right? And so we were very moon oriented. It's amazing the diverse science fields that they're going into now that really were not open to me at the time. 
and it's it's fascinating to see where these kids interests are mm -hmm. and I say kids young adults because mm -hmm. they will be going into the industry and branching out to new products and things mm -hmm. that will help us get to you know the moon and beyond yeah. and what about you I'm amazed at how smart they are and how creative. <laughs> yes. So it's almost an instantaneous creativity rather than, you know, kind of read and then, you know, just kind of extend from there. You see just projects that are, could save the world possibly someday, and that's probably nowhere I, I was when I was in junior high. So it's exciting to see the excitement for the next generation and how quickly they become creative. And both of your experience spans decades. Uh, you guys worked in the science industry and still give back. What would you tell other people in the community um, to encourage them to volunteer next year? If you ever have any doubt of where our future is, come to Science Fair. You'll see it right here. It's absolutely stunning to see these young men and women at this level, the capabilities that they have and where they're going to just grow to. It's, the, the, it's limitless for these, you know, these kids. And I agree, it really gives you a positive outlook when things can feel a little negative and you realize our next, how our next generations are so much more creative and collaborative and really thinking about real world problems mm -hmm. at this young of age. So it, it gives you a lot of hope and it makes you feel good for giving back to the community. So this is just round one of judging. You guys will meet and speak mm -hmm. to the students a little bit later on. They'll be here, interview them. Is there anything specific that you guys are looking for? I know you have some questions, right, that you have to ask them, but is there anything that stands out when you guys are judging and interviewing them? The thought process. Okay. How did you come up with this idea? You know, how did you how did you get interested in this? Mm -hmm. Where will it take us? Mm -hmm. What is the where could you go on beyond this? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's like I keep saying, the future is limitless for these kids. Mm -hmm. it's, it's truly amazing if you ever get to see this. And I heard, highly encourage everyone to come out and see it. So. Mine is probably scientific curiosity. Mm -hmm. what, right or wrong, it doesn't matter if you have a, the curiosity to really go to the next level and I want to find out more. Mm -hmm. And you see so much of that at Science Fair. Just wanting to know more, and that's all it takes to become a scientist. Right. Well, Debbie and Charles, thank you so much for volunteering today and for giving back to our local community. I know our students and families are very thankful for it. Um, I did want to ask Andrew for just a couple more questions. Because these are volunteers, um, they don't have to do this, right? They mm -hmm. give some of their time every year to do this. How does somebody become a volunteer for um, the District Science Fair? So usually around October, we will post on the CCISD website a link in which judges can go on and fill out and then I will make contact with the judges and just let them know how the event's going to go and reminders about the date and time. Yeah. Are there any qualifications that they have to meet in order to be a judge? So we just say your love of STEM and your passion for really supporting students and encouraging students to take on that STEM um, maybe career one day or just that curiosity that they have kind of in, in, you know, embracing that. Yeah. And we've got so many people in the surrounding area with NASA and yes. plants and everything that can lend their knowledge and expertise to these students. So we're really grateful. Thank you, Andrea, for your time today. And, uh, and thank you to our judges. They're amazing, yeah. as always. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap up this Facebook Live, but we will share more results about the District Science Fair later on as it comes.